Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am so excited to jump in today's crafting tutorial because I decided to make a new door sign for my home for spring and look how adorable it turned out. So if you're ready to see how I made this, then keep watching. guys so for this craft you're gonna need quite a few things you're going to need some type of wooden round now you can get these at any like home improvement store like Lowe's or Home Depot I'm pretty sure Walmart even sells some of these wooden blanks now but you can also find these at Hobby Lobby or Michaels I just found mine on Amazon and mine came in a pack of five and they are 14 inches wide and it was only $14 making them $2.80 a piece. So I just felt like that wasn't too bad considering, you know, I'm making one of these for myself and then the rest of these I'm making for other people. You're also going to need whatever type of stain or paint you're wanting to paint your wooden round or you could leave it as is if you like this uh, natural color. Today I'm using this Minwax wood finish stain that I already had and this is in classic gray 271. This is one of my favorite stains like of all time so I always have this laying around but I'm going to be using this today on this wooden round but you could obviously stain it whatever color you prefer or you could just paint it if you don't want to stain. I'm also going to be using some paint to actually paint on my design and my words. So I'm just using Apple Barrel in the color Snow White and this is just matte acrylic paint. So this is what I'm going to be using today. So with that being said, you're also going to need a paintbrush if you are using paint and you're also going to need some type of brush or rag to stain your wood. I'm using just this chip paintbrush. This is what I prefer using whenever I work with stain. And then we're also going to be using some Mod Podge for just a quick little tip that I have for you guys anytime you are using like a stencil to paint. But we'll talk about that later, but I'm using some Mod Podge for this little trick. Now for those of you that are going to be freehanding your design or painting your own words on there because you don't need a stencil and you're just good at freehanding, then this doesn't apply to you. But in today's tutorial, I'm just going to show you guys how I make a stencil with some removable vinyl with my Cricut. So I'm going to be using some just removable vinyl that I got on clearance. I typically don't use removable vinyl for any projects other than making stencils with. So I don't mind wasting this for a stencil that I'm just going to throw away. But like I said, if you want to freehand yours, then obviously you don't have to waste your time with the vinyl and the Cricut and cutting all of that out. Now, because these are going to be made to hang on doors, I like to hang mine with some ribbon. So you can choose whatever ribbon you choose to. I just have like this polka dot burlap ribbon. And you can hang your door sign one of two ways. You can either staple your ribbon onto like make a loop on the back of your wooden round and you can just staple it on there with a staple gun as long as it's not going to go through your wood or you can use a drill drill two holes tie a knot in one end put it through the hole put it through the other hole and then tie a knot in so that's just like a handle that the sign hangs from but I'll show you what I do later and then you don't have to have this but just some extra decoration I have this eucalyptus garland and I just typically get the garland because I chop it up into several pieces so I get the most for my money I got mine at Hobby Lobby this was $20 but I waited until this was 50% off so I got this for $10 and it's a six foot garland and I can decorate several signs with this one garland. All right guys, I'm super excited to jump into this craft so let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna let this stain set for about 10, 15 minutes or so, and then we're gonna come back. If any stain is still on the surface and it hasn't absorbed, we're gonna wipe that excess stain off, and then we're gonna continue to let that set. Or at least that's what I would do, but I already prepared ahead of time, and I already did one a few days ago. So this one is perfect and dry and ready to go, so we are ready to craft on this board. So as you can see here, this is how the stain turned out. I love this stain. Isn't this so pretty? 
It's kind of like a warm gray. So I'm gonna get this one out of the way so I can go dry somewhere else where there's some better airflow and ventilation. So it doesn't stink up my craft rooms because I don't wanna have to have my windows open all day up here. And then we will get to decorating this. Okay guys, so like I said, I had stained this one a few days ago, so this one is good to go. We are ready to decorate this. So now I'm ready to go cut out our design out of our removable vinyl with our Cricut. So let's go do that at my other desk. Okay guys, so I'm on my Cricut design space here and I just typed out welcome and I'm using this font called Cream Candy that I got off of defont.com, which I will link down below in the video description for you guys. So I just selected this whole text box and I'm gonna click weld down here so that it welds this as one word. Now, whenever this happens, I'm gonna show you like a cool little trick that I do to fix this because we don't want that to be solid, obviously. And the reason I even click weld in the first place is because I want all of these letters, anytime you're doing like cursive or scripty fonts, if you want your letters to touch, you want this to be one whole piece of vinyl. It's one continuous thing to weed out and paint it. I mean, you could paint these separately, I guess, but why would you do that when you could just cut it all out in one piece? So I'm just going to undo that weld. And when you click the word as a whole text box, like this whole thing is one piece because it's a whole text box. So we're going to ungroup these letters so that instead of one word, they are individual letters. So I have my whole text box selected here. I'm gonna click ungroup up here at the top. And now you can see over here, instead of my one text box, now they are individual letters. So now I'm going to just move that O out of the way for just a second. And then I'm just going to select these letters on top, leaving the O out. Now I'm gonna click weld. So now all I have to do is just slide my little O into place here and then select the O and then my other letters that are already welded together and I'm just gonna hit weld again. And now our O is attached. Now it's one piece. It's gonna cut this out as one piece. So now we are ready to cut this out. So I'm making mine 11 inches. Like I said, the wood is 14 inches. So I want there to be space on both sides of this, but I like this size, I like this. So I'm just gonna hit make it and then I'm just gonna hit continue. So I just selected matte vinyl because it is a matte removable vinyl, but it just cuts out like regular vinyl. And now we are ready to actually cut our vinyl on our Cricut. So normally we would weed out the negative image of our design here. So like the background vinyl, not the actual word because typically we have to use the vinyl that we're cutting out for design to put on something. But because we are using this as a stencil, we're kind of working backwards today. So instead of weeding out the background, we're gonna be weeding out our words. Isn't that so satisfying? Okay, and it's that simple. So now we are ready to put on our transfer tape so that we can put this vinyl onto our wood and paint it. But first, we're gonna cut the other part of our design out so that we can paint everything at once. Okay, so for the second part of our design, I just have a blank canvas. I'm gonna go to images, and I already typed in leopard spot, so I just wanna look for some like leopard print that I can just cut out. Okay, so here we go. Now I'm gonna stretch this to 11.5 because that is the longest width that we can cut to without upgrading to our two foot long mat. So now I'm just gonna hit make it and same as before, we're gonna hit continue. Okay, 
So the Cricut finished cutting out our leopard spots into our vinyl here. So we are ready to weed this out. But we aren't going to be using this one so much as a stencil solely because I want the stained wood to be our design. So with this half of the design, we're going back to our old ways and we are going to be weeding out the background vinyl, leaving all of the leopard spots because that's what we're going to be putting onto our sign and we're going to be painting right over them and that may not make a lot of sense until you see what i'm talking about in just a minute so that was super simple so now i'm going to put our transfer tape onto our whole piece of vinyl here so that i can transfer this entire piece and i don't have to worry about it like folding over itself or getting messed up. So I have this big roll of transfer tape here. I love this stuff. I got this on Amazon. All right guys, now I could use transfer tape and transfer over all of these leopard spots, but it wouldn't go all the way to the edge because this is only 11.5 inches, if you don't remember. And this is 14 inches wide if we go all the way up to that center point. So, I chose not to go all the way to that center point, but as you can see, they're still not gonna go all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to hand pick the leopard spots that I want. All right guys, and then I'm gonna be putting a piece of masking tape right here. And you'll see why in just a second. And I also like to make it just a little bit longer than the actual sign so that I can kind of tape it to my table and it won't be like shifting around on me while I'm working on it. Okay guys, so the little trick that I do with the Mod Podge and I've seen a ton of other people do this and I actually learned this from TikTok is if you just put Mod Podge over your stencil before you actually paint it with your paint you're not going to have any bleeding you know like sometimes when you like paint inside of a stencil and then you peel off the stencil and you can kind of see like little lines or blotches around it instead of like crisp nice edges like it should look because you're using a stencil when you apply a super thin coat of mod podge over your stencil and then let that dry and then add your paint and then peel up it looks phenomenal. So I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna do that right now. So I'm just gonna paint over these leopard spots because I'm going to be painting over this entire bottom half of the sign with white paint because we're gonna peel up the vinyl. The stained wood is going to be our leopard spots. Y'all already know, because it's leopard, this one's going on my front door. <laughs> So just a nice, thin, even layer. And we're gonna do the same thing inside of our stencil up here where it says, welcome. Okay guys, so now that our Mod Podge is dry, now we are ready to put on our paint. So I'm just going to pour the paint directly on here. And I just decided I'm gonna use a sponge brush instead of a regular paint brush because I feel like this is gonna be way easier. I almost forgot to put paper or paper towels down so that I don't get paint all over my table, which isn't a big deal because it's an epoxy tabletop, so I can just clean it up with a wipe pretty easily. But I'm just doing a pretty thin coat of white paint Okay, and I'm always like way too impatient to wait and I just like to peel up my vinyl before my paint even dries. You just gotta be careful so that you don't smear it. Alright guys, so now we are going to peel up our tape and then we're going to let our paint set and dry for about an hour or so and then we will come back and we'll be ready to decorate it. 
And I actually decided that I want like another thin white line right here um, just to add something else because I feel like I should have done the welcome a little bit lower, but because I didn't, I mean, that's okay. But I just need to add something here because I don't like that it's like a whole inch in between the word and my leopard bottom. Alright, does not look so much better. I think so. Like I said, now we're gonna let this set and completely dry and then we'll come back and decorate it. Okay guys, so now that my paint is dry, we are ready to decorate this. So the first thing that I like to do is, is staple my little loop that I hang my door hanger by. So I just figure out where I need to center it at, flip it over, and then I always like to just like fold up once. And then I'm just going to use my staple gun. And the staple does go through the wood. But I always just take a pair of pliers and push them down. And it's fine because we end up putting decorations over that. So you don't see where the staples come through anyway. Okay, so here's our little loop to hold our door hanger on our door. Now we are ready to add the last decorations to our door hanger before it'll be done. Um, so I just have my cordless hot glue gun preheating right here. So as soon as that is ready, then we can add our little decorations on. Okay, while I'm waiting on my hot glue gun to preheat, I'm going to go ahead and make my bow. So I like to do this anytime I'm making a bow for a wreath. And I happen to be using a wider ribbon that has wire in it. It's like a classic wreath bow. So basically you just lay it out and I like to just do like the length of my hand here and then you're just going to fold it over. Then I just put my hand back, fold it again and you're just going to keep going back and forth. Okay and then I just kind of twist mine and pinch mine in the middle. And then I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner or you could use a wire or floral wire if you have that or even like string. You now you don't want to do it so tight that you're not going to have any wiggle room but I just twist mine a couple times and then you have these loops right here. So then you're just going to go around and fluff them up and then twist so that they're kind of going like different directions and you're making a like classic wreath bow that has a lot of volume. Okay, and then we'll fix it a little bit more once we have it glued down, but that is pretty much the bow. Okay, now our hot glue gun should be warmed up enough. And then I'm just gonna hold my bow down with my scissors so I don't burn myself pressing it into that hot glue. You can use a staple gun, but just know you'll have to, you know, push down the ends if it goes through your wood, if your wood is not thick enough like mine is. But I always like just going the easy route and doing hot glue, especially when it's like decorations for my own home. So now that it is all set, now I'm going to fluff up this bow. And now look how adorable that is. I love how my new door sign came out, you guys. I think it is so adorable. It's so me. And I think, honestly, it's not just a spring door sign. I mean, I could have this up all year long, but I am just so happy with how it came out. So as always, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, be sure to let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, feel free to drop a comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys think. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any other crafting tutorials. Oh.